William, what feelings do come up when I tell you the words keyboard avoiding view? Um, feeling of uh, misery because you see it's like you live your day-to-day -day life and you feel I live a productive life as a software engineer and then you tell me about keyboard avoiding view and I'm like, oh no, I know nothing. <laughs> I know yeah, zero. Right. <laughs> I mean, maybe you start your day saying, wow, it's going to be a great day. And then you, day. you maybe get it working on iOS, but then you try to also get it working consistently on both platforms. Yes. And then maybe there's just like a slight bug and suddenly your, your, your day turns really bad. Yes. W is it fair to say, you tell me that if we were only working on iOS, on iOS, it's a simple story. The API is clear, is complete, and things just work. And you can build a user experience that really makes sense. But when it gets super tricky, is like you said, if you want basically to try to provide a user experience that is consistent on iOS and Android. And this is where the real trouble starts because completely different API, lots of... Is my assumption fair? Yeah, I think this is what most people do. They make make it working on iOS and then they go back to Android and try to make it it's work huge there as well. Huge mistake. And, <laughs> and then the pain starts. But wow, here's some something really interesting to think about, about keyboard avoiding view. So on iOS, the keyboard like slides slides over the view when you start popping it up. But on Android the, the keyboard doesn't slide over the view, the view itself resizes it to become smaller. Absolutely, yes. So this is something that I think is uh, most people um, assess wrongly that they try to put a keyboard avoiding view on Android when actually by default the view itself is avoiding the keyboard. So would it be fair to say that here most of the pain is inflicted by the React Native API, which at the beginning makes you believe that, you know, you use this uh, keyboard avoiding component that will work consistently on iOS and Android. And because maybe the paradigm is so different that here it would, it would actually even be better to just say, no, it's keyboard avoiding view iOS. And then Android is a completely different story. And if you want to unify, you should do it yourself because you cannot really rely on these high level constructs. I don't know. Yeah, at the very least, it's very confusing. But I think it's also it's also a really complicated subject. So let, Be, let, let me, yes, yeah. let me <laughs> tell you what, what, what's... Because also what you said on Android can be configured, right? You can configure different behaviors. Sorry. Yes, <laughs> that, that's, that's one of the things that makes it even more confusing. So, of course, we have... We have uh, keyboarding view, avoiding view with like four different settings that you can pass. Height, position, padding, and my favorite, undefined. <laughs> <laughs> so you can pass in no behavior at all, and that's like it's separate behavior. And each one of these works kind of different on, on iOS and Android. So I think one key is to put in a different... Uh, behavior on iOS and Android to make it work correctly. But then there's also a little property in the Android manifest.xml called Android colon the Windows soft input mode Yes, that you can set. This is uh, also a cause of uh, misery for some people because I believe, I might be wrong, it might have changed, but at some point this value would be different if you run on a managed export project or if you once you build the APK, this value would be different from the export client. And so, so people would build their APK from a managed expo project and then get a completely different behavior. Right. So on expo you <laughs> that's a that's, <laughs> that's an, an that, 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 that's another small <laughs> side story on, on, on Expo, <laughs> the default for Windows Soft input mode I think it's like adjust pan except if you like change the status bar property if you like make the status bar transparent then it's adjust resize or something like that <laughs> um, but yeah so you can go into your Android manifest XML and you can choose between eight different options um, the default is like leave it up to the device to decide mm -hmm. uh, which I, I would not recommend 
Um, so the default is called adjust unspecified, and mm. kind of uh, well, you, you'll see what you'll get. And there's adjust resize, uh, which is what I was talking about. That the view itself resizes, and the keyboard is like a separate view, so it's kind of like a split view. If you do this, then often you maybe don't need a keyboard avoiding view at all, because the keyboard doesn't go over the view. And there's there's adjust pan which uh, could make sense. So that basically gives you the same behavior on iOS uh, as on iOS. So the keyboard goes over the view. So if you set adjust pan, uh, then it might help you because at least uh, the underlying behavior of the operating system does the same. And maybe you'll get a consistent behavior. That sounds uh, super exciting. Yeah, it is. Well, of course, you have to make sure that all your um, existing components uh, don't break. And yes, and by the way, even if you have this great option, you still, when you use a keyboard uh, API uh, in React Native, you will still have some differences between iOS and Android, just to keep in mind. But the Android API is a subset of the iOS API. <laughs> yeah, well, one bug I recently had was that I said, okay, you know, I can deal with this by just setting Android Windows Soft Input Mode to adjust pan. Um, but then at the same time, I was using the API keyboard dot add event listener. Exactly. Keyboard will show, and then that event doesn't fire anymore. Yes, of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, we cannot uh, dare to be fancy with these uh, with these things. So, what about Expo? As an Expo user, what can I do? So as an Expo user, you pretty much have to live with only one uh, of these presets and you have to work around it. Mm. Um, well, actually, this raises a good point. We should, uh, you know, like open an issue and say, wow, it should be customizable because it seems like one limitation that could just like break a feature for someone. Yeah, absolutely. But then there's also like another prop to add to the confusion. It's called keyboard vertical offset, um, especially on iOS. So I think I configured everything correctly. The The, the thing that is supposed to slide up um, is sliding up at the correct proportions. I thought I got it working, but then it's not, it's not at the right height. So it's like a bit too high, um, especially if you use the iPhone 10. And that I could not solve without installing another library. It's called React Native iPhone 10 Helper. Mm. Um, this library helps you calculate the correct keyboard vertical offset on iOS. Um, and I also stole it from Rainbow. They use this library as well to cool make it calculate correctly and whew, with all that in mind i got it working nice you guys seem to have a nice uh, almost collaboration with uh, rambo because you you you're using some of their code for your uh, graph interactive graph i saw a tweet from uh, Mikhail Danik where he mentioned he's using one of your components in the rambo app so it sounds like Open source is really uh, working great, and you guys uh, seem to have really a lot of uh, positive interactions. Yeah, it was uh, just yesterday evening that, um, so it was pretty new for me. I saw that, wow, now they seem to use my component as well, which I'm pretty happy about. There are so many React Native components to build and small problems to solve. That collaborating is uh, awesome. And it's, yeah, and it's pretty, I mean, I was like, whoa, that's a high praise because, I mean, it's not anyone who's, uh, who's using your component. It's Mikhail Danik, so you know what it means. It's good, right? So, it made me really happy for a minute. Yes. Um, got, uh, I got hyped. I would have been very happy also <laughs> if this would have happened for one of my packages. So, yeah. yeah, so as a conclusion for keyboard avoiding view, I would say consider the following, that maybe on Android you don't even need to use it. Um, keep in mind that the keyboard by default behaves differently on uh, both platforms. And 
uh, try the different behaviors, try to use iPhone X, uh, the React Native iPhone 10 helper, and with all of that, maybe at the end of the day, you'll get it working. Wow. You know, it's funny because uh, last week, someone in the comment uh, was asking us about React Native uh, interviews questions and how to land a React Native developer job. And I think, you know, just based on what you're saying about uh, the keyboard avoiding you, I'm thinking if you come to your interview and you say, you know, guys, I can deal with your keyboard avoiding you problems, I think you, you get the React Native job <laughs> immediately. You're hired immediately. Yes. We need exactly this. <laughs> You're hired. 